This is your first year, I mean, first assignment as a uh, past, uh, parish pastor, right? Yes. Um, and then you, you have two parish to handle. Yes. Um, how does it feel to be given such a big task? I was at St. Christopher's as an associate when I got the call from the Archdiocese. And uh, I just got done doing a mass at the nursing home and I was driving back and I saw that I missed a call and so I got to the parking lot. I just stayed in my truck and I called back. Um, at the time it was, um, um, oh, what was his name? Oh, it's gonna kill me now. Um, he was the vicar for clergy at the time and I called him back and, and he explained I was going to be going to Terre Haute, and he explained that it was going to be St. Patrick's and St. Margaret Mary's, um, and all the stuff that was involved with the school, and then, you know, having the Spanish Mass here, and all that kind of stuff, and, and I just remember feeling very overwhelmed, you know, um, just thinking, you know, I've never been a pastor before, now I'm, I'm getting two parishes and a school, um, and it's, it's two hours away from, you know, where I grew up. So, all that kind of thrown together, I was, I was very, um, you know, anxious about the whole thing until I got out here, and then it just all kind of fell into place. Okay. Yeah. What was your first impression with the, like, the physical aspect of St. Margaret Mary as a church? Because it's, you know, it's not very, um, what do you call it, traditional. Right, right, which is what I grew up with, right? So I grew up with a traditional style church, uh, St. John's in Innixburg. Um, and, and so, but I've been in amphitheater style churches before, oh, yeah. and so coming in here, um, my, my first impression was, you know, how, how everyone's able to participate in the Mass well. Uh, and especially, I will say, like, it is, this is probably the easiest space to give a homily in. Uh, because you can see how people react, right? So, like, at St. Patrick's, like, love that space, beautiful space, but you try to preach there, and you have no idea what the back half of the, mm -hmm. the church is yeah. doing like if they're engaged if they're falling asleep you have no idea <laughs> but here like you you can look out and you, you can just see everybody and and you can see their engagement and noddings of heads you know and all that kind of stuff so uh, this physical space works for that participation and for the preaching uh, to take place so it works very well for that okay now how about the congregation what was your first impression with the congregation they uh, my, my first impression was they're very talkative <laughs> Really? Because well, because of my first mass, right? Like I got here at for the four o'clock mass, and I'm getting ready to hear confessions, and all I hear out here is jibber jabber, jibber jabber, jibber jabber. You know, but but then it's part of the culture. You know, it's just yeah. it's what we do. We come here and we talk and we we reconnect yeah. with with people we haven't seen for a week, um, and so it, there's kind of a, a beauty to that culture. Uh, the other thing I love about uh, St. Margaret Mary's people is just how laid back and and uh, the great sense of humor they have. Um, like when I give a homily, like people just laugh. They just they just enjoy coming to church. There's a great joy in this parish that just you don't see that everywhere. Okay, now take us back to the first mass that you have here in the church. Yeah. What can you remember? Uh, I remember um, getting up and in, introducing myself, you know, and and talking about my vocation to the priesthood. Um, and afterwards, it, it was it was almost like trying to drink water from a fire hydrant. Because as I stood at the door over there, you know, everyone's going by and they're telling me their names and their kids' oh. names and who they're related to. And I'm just sitting here at the end of it like, I mean, I, I didn't catch anybody's name because there were so many. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, like, it was very welcoming. And so I, I knew, as overwhelmed as I felt getting the call to come out here, that everything was going to be okay. Uh, because the people here were going to take care of me, they were going to make sure that things went well, that I wasn't doing this on my own, like it was very much a team effort. And so, it, yeah, that just, that was very clear yeah. from the beginning. How about your first day as a pastor working in the office, mm -hmm. running, you know, run, managing the administrative side of running a church? Right. How does it feel? I mean, what's your first impression with the staff? And right, and I will say that is unique because before, uh, when I was at St. Christopher's, I was just part of the staff, right? Like I was the associate, I wasn't in charge. Mm -hmm. and, and so there was something very relaxing in that. Like if, if there was some drama happening or whatever at St. Chris's, like I didn't care, you know, because I wasn't super involved mm -hmm. uh, in that way. I wasn't, I wasn't in charge. But here, like, there, there is a sense that the buck stops here, you know, so like whatever, whatever happens, there is a sense of responsibility for that. Now, I will say, though, our staff is amazing. Like we have, I mean, everyone is just super, super good at what they do. Now, there are times where they're so good and so passionate <laughs> that they'll, they'll, they'll kind of step on each other's toes, you know, like that tends to happen. But it's because they're just, they're in love with what they're doing. They're very passionate about it. 
and, and you can feel that in, in the day-to-day -day working of the office. There's just uh, an air of efficiency and, and a love of God going on. So I feel very blessed with our staff. Now, what do you like most about St. Margaret Mary as a church? The Filipino food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was way up there. I mean, I remember the first Wednesday. That I was here, and, and the, the Filipinos kind of invited me to join them for dinner that night. It was just phenomenal. Um, so that, that would definitely be up there, but I, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I think I've kind of already answered it. I mean, just the joy of this space, you know, just mm -hmm. how joyful the people are, and, and the multicultural element. I think yeah. I can say that. You know, the Filipinos, but then we have the Hispanic Mass when you that were, I help with. And, sorry. Yeah. When you were at St. Christopher, were you exposed to the different cultures of the we, we did have a Filipino community there, uh, which was really nice, but, but not nearly as big or as vibrant as what we have here at St. Margaret Mary's. Um, and, and I never knew what Zimbonga Bee was, you know, mm -hmm. until I got out here, you know, and so to be a part of that has been awesome. And, um, and I had zero dealings with the Hispanic community before here. Uh, in fact, I'm still learning to do the Spanish Mass, and, you know, they put up with me, which is fine. Um, but, uh, That's amazing, though. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. And, yeah. and to be able to interact with the kids, you know, and really kind of make a connection there, like, it's just, it's really good, so... What, what I noticed when you came in as a pastor, you've been, you know, keeping the old traditions, like, you know, the reverse raffle, yeah. the craft fair, and um, the garage sale. Um, you've been keeping with, I mean, you've been keeping it there, and then, mm -hmm. you know, because it really worked. Now, but then you're adding more, like enhancing, like... You Trying know, to, yeah. yeah. Like you have the Friday Station of the Cross, and then the talk, and then yes. the pizza with the pastor, or the book talk, so, yes. which is good. Um, what else are your other plans? <laughs> Well, you hit it on the head. Like, I, I'm one to recognize when something's been going on for a while and it's working, you, you don't mess with it. You know, yeah. you just kind of let it go. Um, but you can find the little things that could use some improvement, you know, and you, and you try to aim for that. Um, our biggest thing now, and, and especially with the 100th anniversary coming up, is the physical side of things. So yeah. you mentioned a lot of the programs um, and a lot of the things we put on for our parishioners, which I think are working very, very well. Mm -hmm. But it only highlights, because our programs are so good and we have so many ministries, mm -hmm the needs that we have on the, the physical side. Um, because we look at our buildings and they're not as conducive to our ministries as we like. So for instance, we're looking in this church to do a few upgrades um, to the ceiling and mm -hmm. to the carpeting, um, getting some new furnishings, like a new baptismal font. Mm -hmm. uh, these are things that we're actively working towards. Then the office building, which gets a ton of use, probably more than most people realize, because that mm -hmm. is, that's the nervous system of the parish, right? Like anything happens during the week, it's going through that office. Mm -hmm. um, and it needs new windows, it's got some water damage, so uh, that's something else. And then I would love to tackle that school building. Like I would love to get in there, but I also recognize that as a huge project and mm -hmm. maybe for another pastor uh, past me, but still it's, it's on my radar to get some of these things uh, taken care of. Yeah, absolutely. One of the biggest thing also that you did was to change the religious ed to Wednesday. Yes. And then, but it's working well. It's really doing well. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, we did, at the very beginning, we had a few parents that were concerned whether they mm -hmm. could get their kids mm -hmm. here on Wednesday nights um, as opposed to Sunday mornings. But I think it's working well. We had more kids this year than we've had in the past. So we saw an increase in our numbers. Mm -hmm. And it just, I think for the kids' sake, it feels very much more vibrant because we combine the two programs as mm -hmm. well. So each grade is much larger than it was before. And I think they, the kids can feel that and they feel much more engaged with their teachers. And it just, mm -hmm. uh, the culture, uh, I think, fits a lot better. Our hope is moving forward that the superintendent of, of schools yeah. here uh, is, is pushing to get rid of everything on Wednesday nights that get in the way. Uh, of churches doing events or, or families getting together. So we're hoping that we're, we're part of that solution, you know, helping families to spend time together yeah. and, and to, to learn more about their faith. And I think it also helps that, you know, because you're more present when it's like yes. on a Wednesday. Oh my goodness, yes. That was one of the big things is before I had to get a sub, like a pre-sub, mm -hmm. uh, to celebrate Masses when I would go visit Religious Ed because I mm -hmm. couldn't I couldn't be in two places at the yeah, same time. Yeah. So I only got to visit. Be. I should. I'm, I'm working on it. Padre Pio style, you know? Uh, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's just, yeah, it was, it was so difficult. And, and even when I could do it, it was only like once a semester. Yeah. 
you know? And so like, I, I hardly knew our kids in religious ed, and which was so unfair because I know our kids at St. Pat's mm -hmm. so much better because I can go during the day, you know, I can go more often uh, to visit them. So with the Wednesday nights, like I see them way more often. And I can visit the kids and, and interact with them more. And we've just, we've got uh, more opportunities for them, like with uh, server training and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's good stuff. And I think it's good too, because like, you know, like we've interviewed the, the teachers, the, the sisters before yeah. that, that taught the school. Oh, and we right, wondered right. why, like, um, you know, there were a lot of sisters, I mean, there were a lot of sisters and even Father Didi's uh, sister, right. said, there's eight of them and all of them went to religious life. That's right, yes. And I said, well, you know, how come uh, during that time, everybody is like wanting to be a priest or wanting to be a nun? And mm -hmm. then he said it's because they spend a lot of time in church and they see, you know, the priest, you know, doing stuff and then they wanted to be like them. That's exactly right. So it's like, you know, if you're always present, then they would see you and then... Yeah, and it, it definitely is a cultural thing because back then, you know, if you were a Catholic in the United States, you, you really lived at your parish, right? Yeah. Like so much of what you did mm -hmm. and, and your community and the meals that you shared and, and the events you went to, it was all at your parish, mm -hmm. right? And so you're right, like the kids got to see the priests and the nuns and they thought, well, maybe maybe that's for me. Yeah. And what we find today is, is we're fighting against the culture because mm -hmm. our kids, you know, they, they just get swept up in, in everything. I mean, with the internet and with YouTube. And, and not that any of that is evil. Mm -hmm. I love YouTube. <laughs> I am on there so often. Yeah, right. We know. That's right. So I'm not saying it's evil, but but we do see that that the church doesn't hold that center place uh, for a lot of our kids mm -hmm. anymore that it used to. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's affected our vocations. I think it's affected how kids live their life, you know, and find meaning in their life. So many of them feel lost or alone. Um, and I think it's just because, you know, they, they don't have that home base that they used to have. So, and so you transferred the religious ed. Well, so Every that's fall, yeah, after yeah. Spring for spring classes. Oh, so that's yeah. Oh, yeah so, so that's been planned. They'll like alternate. That. Yeah, okay. yeah. I thought we didn't have enough room. No, 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 no. So the idea was we would combine the two programs and have the fall semester oh. here and the spring semester oh. there. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Although it was pretty tight over here. It was tight because yeah. of the if we have the Filipino rosary. Yeah. Because then we have this, uh, the the. Parking lot is well, that and I mean just anything. If anything else is going on, like it just, right. it, it, you know, well, at St. Pat's, I mean, there's tons of room, so it just, right, right, you know, but we wanted to tons of parking spot places, right? Yeah, there's a lot of classrooms there. Yes. Mm -hmm. So are we using the classrooms there then? Yep, mm -hmm. yep, for the religious okay. ed programs, and then I think RCIA is going to be like in the library, oh. I think, and then maybe no, they're in room A. Maybe it's. The Bible study is going to be in the library, but mm -hmm. yeah, so it'll be it'll be nice. So there'll be two adult uh, catechists. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yep. That's good. It seems to be working very well. Oh yeah. yeah. There's a lot of attendance. Well, that's just it. We have more kids this year than we've had in the past. More adults coming in because and they're bringing the kids. Yeah, that's exactly I right. think the parents too are like taking the classes seriously. Yes. Rather than just you know. Right. Well, and I will say the only the downside we've seen is our Sunday mass attendance has gone down. Oh really? Yeah. Because ah. we've had a few parents that normally would bring their kids, and then they'd come over for mass afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we have seen a little bit of that, but that's been the only negative. That we've seen, and they may just be going to another mass. You know, maybe right. they're just maybe not. They're just going to four o'clock. Yeah, on Saturday. they could be going four o'clock. They could be going to somewhere else in town. Yeah. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's hard to say whether they're just not going, but that's the only downside we've really seen. But we we got good attendance. I don't know if it's it makes a difference because I I do the second grade, so there's more like parents will take it seriously. Because I I, it's I think the reason we've seen an increase is because you're doing the second grade. They were just like, Marianne, she's she's yeah. our gal. We're going to make sure our no, kids are there. Yeah, no. yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. And I think that's that's a good thing about Wednesday because that gives them another day yes. to think about God other than Sunday. And the hope is that it, it really grows into a really, a truly family event, you know, where a, a family could come drop off the kids for their classes. The parents could go to a class as well, the little kids could go to babysitters, you know, and we could even get to the point where we're offering meals mm -hmm. on, on Wednesday nights. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, take, take a, a page out of the Filipino book, you know, um, but that'd be like a pitching, you know, and so it would even, it would feel like a family meal even on Wednesday nights. So yeah, th this is kind of our goal, you know, to really kind of revamp the family and, and get it back where, where God is at the center of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, how long have you been a fa fa pastor here? Three years? Right? Three and a half years. Three and a half. So. Yeah. What are the struggles that you've encountered? Oh, 
I mean, a lot of it, a lot of it deals with where we're at, you know, so like Vigo County is one of the poorest counties in the state of Indiana. And so time and again, one of the things we run up against is not only do we have needs at the parish that it's hard to meet financially and otherwise, um, mm -hmm. just because of the demographic that we have, mm -hmm. but we are exporting a lot of our goods and materials and, and finances to help the neighborhood, you know, to help to help the city. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the bigger challenges we find is, is how, how does St. Margaret Mary's do that? You know, how do we do that well where we're reaching out? And we've, we've expanded that. I mean, we've got the Salvation Army that we help with. We just had Jack talk about the soup that we're going to be collecting for January. Um, but then we started Christmas caroling in the neighborhood. You know, we do that in December, yeah. which we didn't do before. So mm -hmm. that's another way to reach out. There's been some discussion about can we provide something as far as like maybe like an after school program for the kids. And, and not that we've gotten deep into that discussion, but, but it's, it's an idea, you know, that's been brought forward. So that's been a big challenge is how do we, how do we uh, minister uh, to the people of our neighborhood well? I think when you did the letter for the stewardship, it's nice that you were able to like, um, you know, extend that. I mean, you know, because sometimes we just think about, oh, this is what a, this is what I give for the church. Right, right. And then you said about you know visiting the sick, feeding the hungry, and stuff like that. So you kind of think, oh, okay, then the church oh, needs yeah. more than what I can give. Exactly, because we yeah, yeah and it, and that that's kind of the hope is that you know this becomes a hub where when people participate in, in the programs, it, it's going to reach out and make mm -hmm. a difference in people's lives. Um, but I would say the, the other big challenge, you know, is, as I mentioned earlier, just reaching our youth. And that's come up multiple yeah. times. How do we engage our youth, mm -hmm. um, not only here at St. Margaret Mary's, but across the board, where we're making them lifelong disciples of Christ? Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it is a huge challenge, and no one has a really clear answer except forging those relationships, you know, making mm -hmm. a point to be there for those kids mm -hmm. um, and, and teaching them what it means to pray, what it means to have a trust in God and how that can make a difference. So I'd say those are our two biggest challenges is, is the, the community that we're in, you know, the needs that are there mm -hmm. and, then, and then ministering to the youth. Yeah. Now, how does it feel to, to do Spanish Mass, <laughs> to worship in Spanish? It is. I, I'm always a, a nervous wreck really? when I do it. Yes, and and I. Are you I, doing good so far? I I'm doing okay. <laughs> you know, like and and uh, so like today's a, a good example where uh, because it's a, a feast day, the Epiphany. You know, like there there are different readings that we do and different uh -huh. uh, prayers. You know, and so like it's stuff that's outside of my normal vocabulary. <laughs> and, and so when I'm reading this stuff, I'm just like, you know, I, I don't know what this word means. You know, and so I really have to study up um, ahead of time and get my my homily put together. Um, but I will say they are very gracious about it, and I think they they are just happy, you know, to be able to have mass in their native tongue, you know, uh -huh. to be able to worship uh, in Spanish. And so they're very forgiving, and they kind of were like, you know, we get it. You're making an effort. You know, you're trying to help yeah, us with this. Yeah. And it's not just me. We've got four other priests uh, that also rotate for the month. And so it's good having that variety, different priests bring different perspectives. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us are more fluent than others. Uh, and, um, but they, they bring such a richness to our parish with Our Lady of Guadalupe, mm -hmm. you know, and, and a lot of their celebrations uh, throughout the year. Like uh, today, they'll be celebrating their Three Kings Day, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a big feast for them. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's good and stuff. you also try to speak Tagalog for our Simbangabi Mass, which yeah, is amazing. I, I was told it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> cute means endearing father. Oh, there we it's go. It's a yeah. compliment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a compliment. So, yeah. 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 So, uh, it, I mean, with all the culture, that it's really good. I mean, we appreciate the fact that you make an effort. I, I wish I could do more, though, right? Like, so this is one of those things where it's like you, you see, like, the need, you know, to speak Spanish, to be fluent in Spanish, the confessions that could be heard in Spanish. And I just realized that's, that's something I don't, I don't have that talent yet. You know, have like, you it's. Tried that? The no, <laughs> no. Uh, which my, my professors at St. Minor would kill me because we had to learn everything in Spanish uh -huh. for confession. Um, but I, I have yet to do it mainly because so much of it is, is a dialogue, right, in, in, in the confessional where you're talking with somebody. So I have, I guess I have heard Spanish confessions, but I respond in English and I... I exactly, exactly. So General advice. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm working on it. Um, working on the, the Spanish and... I would love it if I could I could spend some time really diving into it, but time so is a precious thing. So are you doing Rosetta Stone or YouTube? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, got Rosetta Stone, <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah. So I haven't done it for a little while now, but that and Duolingo, so. Have you ever envisioned yourself to be a 
pastor of a multicultural church? Not really, no. Really? No. So and it I, gave us a surprise. It, huh? it did, but at the same time, seminary did a good job preparing us for that. You know, they, they recognized that in the United States today, like any Catholic parish is going to have that diversity because mm -hmm. we are a melting pot. You know, we mm -hmm. have people coming from various cultures, whether it be Filipino, Hispanic, Polish, you know, German, you know, Span whatever it may be. Yeah. Like you can go through the list. Um, so they did a good job preparing us, but I, I really did thinking, you know, here we are in, you know, southern Indiana, you know, like so many of our country parishes are very, uh, you know, uh, homogeneous. You know, they're just, they're just one uh, 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 race you know so to have multiple uh, nationalities represented is really neat so okay. what do you think are the most important things that the church needs to work on as a whole like in yeah. general mm -hmm. oh geez um i would say i would say the biggest thing for me and what i really try to push like in my homilies and how i engage with people is to really promote to people the beauty of the church because I feel like, and, and not, not that there's anything wrong with this, but we have so hammered on the, the sexual morality of the church, right? And what the church teaches in these regards, which is good, and we need to do that. I think that's fine. But if that's what you're leading with, is this is what the church teaches about homosexuality or contraception or abortion. If that's your, your opening line, mm -hmm. no wonder people aren't coming to church. Yeah. You know, like I think you can get there eventually. You got to talk about it. Like you can't just shove it to the side and forget about it. But you start with the beauty of the church. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Bishop Robert Barron, this is one of his big things that he pushes, is you know, how do we tell people, look, we, we have this awesome tradition and mm -hmm. this richness of scripture and, and the architecture and the artwork and the music and the Eucharist. the Eucharist, the sacraments that we have. I mean, so all this beautiful, beautiful stuff, mm -hmm. but people just hear the, the you can't do this, you can't do that. Right, exactly. So, so to start from a different place and, and promote the beauty, and then it leads to goodness of life, and then it leads to truth. You know, it leads mm -hmm. to talking about those deeper issues. So I'd say the biggest thing in the church right now is, is how, do we, how do we dialogue with people? You know, how do we encounter uh, Joe Schmo on the street, you know, who knows nothing about Catholicism? If, if anything, he knows lies about Catholicism. You know, he, he, he thinks he knows what the church teaches, but it's not really what the church teaches. Mm -hmm. So that's a challenge. How do, you, how do you engage people with that? And I will say, like, we've been blessed because our people have been very good about bringing guests with them, you know, family members or, or friends from work. And they come to church and, and they see that at some level. You know, they come here and they can see the beauty of the church. Um, so I think that's one of our big things is to really promote the beauty. And if we can do that, it, it's going to go a long way in solving a lot of problems in the church. Because everything else, the vocation crisis, the thing with our youth, you know, not coming to church, people uh, falling away from the faith, you know, all, all broken marriages, broken faith, all that, all of that can be solved if yeah. we really highlight mm -hmm. what the church has to offer and the beauty of the church. Yeah, exactly. I think it also helped that, you know, at Christmas we give books. Yes. That could, you know, oh, yeah. Like, Giving the books out, giving the chalk the out, you know, the blessing chalk. And yeah. um, really, and I think that's the trick here is that we, we really dive into what are, what are the traditions of the faith mm -hmm. while still maintaining our culture here, you know, where we, we talk before Mass, and that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, what are some areas of the sacraments that we really can dive in and learn more about what the church teaches? Like, yeah, I think that's exactly what we need to do, so... Now, what is your hope for the future of St. Margaret Mary? Uh, my hope for the future of St. Margaret Mary is that every one of my parishioners becomes a saint. Well, that's good. You know, yeah. like that, that is the goal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so that, that's what my prayer is for all the time, you know. And when people come to me and they have questions or they have whatever, like that, that is the goal is to get everyone to that point. Um, and everything else serves that, right? Mm -hmm. So anything we do with the buildings, anything we do with our programming, religious ed, mm -hmm. the Wednesday nights, the whatever, that's the goal is that everyone here becomes a saint. And... And it's a team effort. You know, I realize I can't do it on my own. Like, I have to have my staff and, and the good people of St. Margaret Mary's to make it happen. So. so what is your message for the congregation? Pray. And, and it's so cliche, and I get that. Like, mm -hmm. that's what we always talk about is praying. But I've just seen it. I, I just see lives transformed by it. I see it a peace of mind and a it calm. Works, yeah. It works. I mean, that's just it. Like, it works. And I think so many people just kind of dismiss it because we talk about it so much. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, that's your answer for everything. Just pray about it. It's like, yes. <laughs> yes, that is the answer. You know, talk to God. Like, yeah, bring yeah. him into your life. Sure. So, yes, that would be my message. We would 
like to commend you because you're a good homilist. Ah, well, thank you. Yeah, yes. yes, well. Because you see, the gospel, you hear it every year, you know, the things are, but right. if you give us a good perspective of, you know, and make us see a different angle of it. That's like the hope. In our everyday life, you put songs in it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I feel right, like yeah. a Filipino. <laughs> 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 you know, it sings a lot. <laughs> that's good. That's yeah, a good thing, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, yeah, that, the, beauty, the beauty of the church, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I think you're... And the thing is, what kills me is I get these homilies and people are just thirsty for it. You know, like they are so hungry mm -hmm. for these messages mm -hmm. and, and, and for something fresh. You know, not, not completely new. We're, we're breaking from tradition. We're mm -hmm. breaking from the past. Mm -hmm. But if anything, we're diving into it and, and exposing it and saying, it. yeah, and, and saying, this is your faith. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what you, you've signed up for and the beauty of it and what's good about it. So, yeah. Yeah, it's like the story doesn't just happen 2,000 years ago. You can yes. apply it. Yes. In the present time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. My goal is to ruin every pop song so that you, when you hear it, you think about God. God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Related to God. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Doc, you have a question? How did you come up with your style of giving a homily? My style? So, yes. Mm -hmm. That's something that then. Um, did somebody give you an inspiration? So when we were when we were in seminary, they gave us different styles, right, that we could use, different methods of giving homilies. And and they're very, very good. And they're very much based on, you know, what keeps people's attention. You know, how do you how do you give it some emotional weight that they, they carry it with them? They they take it with them out into the world. Um, and so I, I, I learned from the best um, at St. Minard. I mean we, we just had some great priests down there and our professors were awesome. Mm -hmm. What I made a mistake on though is when I first started as a priest and even as a deacon, I would write them out. Like I would take the time to make a word document and I would I would write them out completely. And I would stand up there and I would just read, read. Oh, off right. the page. You really? know, and oh yeah. And, and they're very similar. I mean they'd have a story, you know, and there'd be something humorous and then I tied it. Like it was very similar in that regard, but it was it was just read off the page. And people you could just tell like it was it wasn't as engaging. It wasn't as alive. And so one weekend Completely by accident, like it was just a busy week. I, 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 well, I didn't even write one. Oh. So I had the idea in my head, but I didn't actually t spend the time writing it out. Um, and so I was freaking out because I was like, you know, I'm used to reading off the page and, and I have nothing. I have it in my head, but I don't have anything on a piece of paper. So I got up there and I was as nervous as could be, but I gave the homily and people just came up and they're like, Father, that's the first time we felt that you were talking to us with us, you know, rather than just reading off a page, yet you were in a dialogue, you were actually relating to us. Uh, and so I, I kept practicing that, you know, how do I give a homily without having a sheet of paper in front of me? Um, and then over time it just grew, and so I began to realize people love stories. You know, they, they love stories, funny stories, if you can get those in, you know, those are great. Uh, people love music, you know, these are the things that people can relate to, and what that's what you do. You, you, Catch you, your attention. Yeah, it's almost like fly fishing, you know, you like put it out there and, and you get the hook in, you know, and, and as soon as you do that and they relate and they're like, yeah, I, I, I know that song or, or I have a similar story to that or I like Star Wars, you know, mm -hmm. then then you can reel them in and then you can say, OK, but there's a faith element here. And my real hope is that people will do the same thing in their life and they'll have stories that they can relate to the gospel. You know, they'll hear a song and be like, that's Christ talking to me. You know, like that that's the hope is that it's not just seeing me do it week to week, but then that. Everyone else starts doing it too. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. But do you make a draft then? No. Really? No, no, no. Because yours is very consistent. Like I could do, like I did Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And then you have like the same sequence of. <laughs> I it's that I don't know how I do it because even Donna has talked about that where yeah. she's just like she goes from mass to mass and it doesn't change a whole lot and yeah. Yeah. I can, I can't explain it. That's yeah. amazing. Well, I'll tweak it a little bit if I notice something is off, like there's not a good translate or transition in a certain spot, or I didn't quite make the connection I was hoping to make. So it's weird. The four o'clock mass here is either the best homily of the weekend or the worst. Uh, because sometimes that raw, like just getting out there and just talking about it for the first time, I'm energized and it comes across really clearly. And then it's hard to recapture that for the other three masses. Or the first mass, I'm like, oh, that was horrible. Like that, it wasn't even close to what I wanted it to be. And then I spend the next few masses tweaking and making it better, so. But you do sit down though and like reflect and then this is what I'm going to I, I do. pray about it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I pray about it, but I, I don't write anything down. The only time I have notes is if it's like a quote or lyrics yeah. to a song or, or something or like that. Or your top 10 things. Or top 10, <laughs> yes. Got my top 10 lists, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. But so that's amazing because it's pretty consistent. Like For I the mean, most part, yeah. yeah that's yeah. good. So, but yeah, I just, I don't know, like it just, it sticks. I think I just, 
when I say it and then I see how people respond, I know this is going to work. Like if I, if I stick to this script, it's going to work. So, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. Do you have something else, though? Or did the Silvia, because it's you. You have sure photographic finally. memory. I do not have that. I know that. Are you sure? I'm because pretty sure. You almost follow the same. Yeah, I mean, I, I try to, yeah. But I don't know. Like, it just, I don't know. I can't explain it. How about your family? How's your family? How are they adapting uh, to all this? Very well. So they, they have been uh, my biggest cheerleaders. I mean, so um, I usually head home on Sunday nights and I'm home on Monday. Um, and they've actually adjusted their schedules to make this work where every Monday, you know, every Monday night we get together uh, as, as a whole family. So, you know, mom and dad, but then all the brothers and sisters and all the nieces and nephews, like, so the whole family gets together every Monday night and shares in a meal and they do that because they know I'm going to be home mm -hmm. um, and and I'm not there for all the other stuff that happens throughout the week um, and for me that's a big deal because I didn't want to be that uncle that never knew his nieces and nephews mm -hmm. except at Christmas and Easter you know mm -hmm. um, I wanted to just be a part of their life and it's great going home and Isabel yeah. will run up and she'll be like Uncle Danny you know <laughs> it's just like it's great you know so um, so they, they're just great about all this and they, they pray for me. They're there for me when, you know, I, I need to talk about whatever and um, they're just, they're just great. And, and they, they bend over backwards to, to help me, you know, to, to do this ministry. Um, and that's because they're the ones who spark this in me. You know, they're strong in their faith. You know, they, they have a deep respect for the priesthood. And um, when I go home, sometimes we'll celebrate mass together, you know, which is really neat as a family. And, um, so yeah, they're, they're just phenomenal. Um, and I, I realize how, how blessed I am in that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. well, uh, we don't see your family very often, but you feel like they are with us all the time. Well, right. Yeah. And it's kind of funny when they do visit because people know them like from the homilies and the stories, you know? And so, so they know what to talk about. They know, you know, my dad loves to hunt, you know, they, they know that mom, you know, got stuck in the shed one day, you know, like all these different stories that have happened. And, um, so yeah, they, they, they were just here for Christmas. They came Christmas Eve. And we're at the Midnight Mass over at St. Patrick's. Um, and uh, I have my brother Anthony, he's planning on coming out, I think, in March with his kids uh, to visit for a weekend. So, so it's, yeah, it's, it's nice when they come to visit. So, That's good. Yeah. Yeah, you're blessed because not all priests could go home and, you know, right. spend time with their family. And not all families, you know, stay that with the faith, you know, like, because mm -hmm. all my siblings are in the same boat. Like, they're yeah. all very strong in their faith and they're raising their kids to be the same. Mm -hmm. And I just look out there and of no fault to the parents you just you just see so many kids that fall away and you see so many families that you know they don't have that they don't have that unity of belief where they get together and they can they can talk about mm -hmm. what happened at mass you know mm -hmm. or or what feast days are coming up or yeah. you know it just it's i i don't think i took I, I think i took it for granted until i became a priest mm -hmm. and and i saw other families and then i began to realize how how special that is so mm -hmm. yeah Um, it's amazing how you pull everybody together, you know, in a very short period of time. Oh, you mean uh, the parish? Uh, no, you have two, two parishes, yeah. the school, yeah. the kids and the elderly, mm -hmm. and of course uh, those in between. That's what I've uh, seen in a very short period of time, how everybody has really come together. And it's I, all through your effort, and uh, you know. I, th I think they just feel sorry for me, yeah. and they're just like, we're, we're gonna we're gonna help them any way we no, can. We're gonna no. pretend we're getting along, and no, no I'm kidding. I, I, <laughs> my, but my, uh, I think your biggest problem, biggest problem. Uh, that uh, you'll find is if ever you are pulled out of the area. <laughs> <laughs> there will be a revolution, I think. <laughs> well, I'm hoping I get a second term, and that that means I would have yeah, another. For it, yeah, yeah that, that would mean I'd have another. Uh, what would that be? Seven? No, nine years? No. Six, eight. Eight years. Yeah, yeah. yeah if I had another and, term, um, yeah. And uh, we also realize that you know, uh, with so much to share, we cannot keep you to ourselves. Well, right. I just, at this point, I mean, being here three and a half years and, and starting a lot of this, I, I want to see a lot of this through, you know, like, yeah. I mean, so I'm hoping the Archdiocese doesn't pull me anytime soon. I hope mm -hmm. to be here for a while, but yeah, that's kind of the nature of the, the priesthood. You know, you, you swear obedience to the bishop. So he sees a bigger picture than we see and, and he knows where priests need to go. So we'll, we'll give it up to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. See what happens. But in the meantime... 
It's good stuff. Father, thank you very much. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you, Father. All right. Thank you. Okay.